OK, hello, good afternoon and welcome to our latest in a series of Near Me Network webinars. Today we're going to be exploring out of hours in general practice and how Near Me has been embedded in uh, a number of services uh, around Scotland. I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague Rachel Burke this afternoon and I'll introduce our speakers in a few minutes. Um, what we're going to be doing is I'll just run through a couple of housekeeping um, instructions for folk joining us this afternoon. So you'll all be on mute throughout the whole of the, of the session this afternoon. We do have a Q&A section. You'll see two little speech bubbles with a question mark inside on the right hand side of your screen, hopefully up the upper corner. Um, please use these to um, interact with us, ask questions, um, make comments or, or make suggestions uh, uh, around some of the things that you've experienced you, around using near me. You'll also see some accessibility options which are on the three little circles next to your um, uh, control tab and that will allow you to start viewing uh, closed captions or subtitles and you can also set uh, how fast or slow those go and you'll also be able to pin some of the speakers if you need to see their faces more clearly. Um, hopefully you've got a good Wi-Fi connection this afternoon. If you do find that you cannot see us or hear us, please leave the session and then join again afterwards and that often sorts it out. If you're still having problems um, getting to a wired uh, broadband connection using an Ethernet cable sometimes helps and if you really aren't able to get in at all then we are recording this session today so it will be available later on on the Near Me YouTube channel. So this afternoon, as I said, I'm joined by Rachel Burke, who's the tech program manager here at Near Me, and she's, been, she's going to be monitoring the Q&A and responding to your questions, but also um, summarising the Q&A at the end and, and putting some of your questions to the panel. So <clears throat> I would very much like to uh, and ask you to, to think of questions for the panel and we'll do them at the end. So today we've got Dr. Scott Jameson starting off with us and he's the Executive Officer for Quality Improvement at the ICGP, but also a GP involved in delivering out of our services. Uh, we're also joined by Martin Berry, who's a, an AMP and a team lead uh, in urgent care services in NHS 5. And also Di Anderson, who's an out of our service manager in Dumfries and Galloway, and also Dr. Esmat Bimani, who is an out of hours GP also in Dumfries and Galloway. We very much like to interact with our audience on social media, so please follow us at, at, at NHS near me and myself, Mark Bezik AHP, and any hashtags you want to use today around hashtag near me or hashtag out of hours GP near me, that would be super. Also, must mention that we are ably supported by um, Mark Glass today, who's doing the production in the background for us from the VC support services. So what we'll do, we'll just move on to what we're going to speak about today. So we're going to look at the processes and approach that, that services have used to embed near me into out of hours. We're going to, people are going to describe their experiences using near me. And also we'll hear of some real life examples of how near me have been used with patients. And also we'll be quite honest around some of the challenges that have been uh, faced and how those have been um, dealt with around using near me in this area. So, and again, I said earlier that we would have time for some questions at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Scott Jameson now and I'll see you after Scott has finished. Thank you very much. Over to you, Scott. Okay, I'll see you after Scott is finished. Thank you very much. Over to you, Scott. Uh, hi there. Can you hear me OK there, Mark? Yeah. Thumbs up. Yes, somebody. Yep. That's fine. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, good uh, afternoon. I'm Scott Jameson. I'm a GP um, uh, in Kittermuir in Tayside. Um, I also do a, a significant amount of work in the out of hours. Um, and um, it was my... Yeah. Hi everyone, um, uh, good uh, afternoon. I'm Scott Jameson, I'm a GP um, uh, in Kittermuir in Tayside. Um, I also do... Uh, I'm getting a lot of feedback on myself. Two seconds, guys, I don't um, know why. And, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You probably want to kill the web browser, I think, if you maybe get it open as well. 
Mark, check him out. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that any better? Right, there we go. <laughs> um, some nods. So uh, uh, my apologies there, guys. I was getting a, a heck of a lot of feedback delayed on myself, and I'm not sure why. Um, so it's all hopefully sorted now. Um, so I was just waiting for myself to catch up on myself, um, and it's gone quiet now. So maybe that's maybe just the gap of me yeah. not speaking. Um, so um, yeah, uh, with regards to hours, um, and okay. uh, we have written a... Um, right, there we go. Um, some nods. So I uh, have my apologies there, guys. I was getting out of no, a lot of I'm still going to get some feedback on myself. Um, so it's not hopefully sorted now. Mark, do you want somebody else to take over? Because I'm getting feedback on myself about a minute after I speak. Um, so I um, need to mute because I'm on mute. Oh. Yeah, um, yes, I, I can he see that now. Right, I don't know how to do this. How am I going to do this? Does somebody else want to talk? And I'll jump out. Do you want somebody else to take over? Because I'm getting feedback myself about a minute after I speak. There. Oh, is that better? Ah, there. I've done it. Mark. No, maybe not. Right, okay, I'm so sorry. I don't know why it's working so badly. Um, uh, kill all the browsers. Yes, I've killed lots of browsers and hopefully something works. Right, um, very quickly, national picture then, cutting into my time. Um, we have written national guidance on uh, the use of near me in out of hours, and that was a great bit of work to do. Um, that doesn't mean that things are going to be easy for how to deliver uh, near me and out of hours, I have to say. Um, it, it is quite challenging, and I think we need to remember that in out of hours, we've become so used to a different way of working throughout a lot of, 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 of our work, um, and that's to predominantly do a lot of telephone consultations. But I think we need to remember as well, telephone consultations do tend to be shorter. We tend to cover less problems. They can be characterised by less data gathering, um, less advice might be given, and less rapport building um, versus uh, seeing somebody in person or, or potentially um, seeing somebody on video consultation. Um, could a face-to-face -face consultation or a video consultation, as I'm suggesting here, um, uh, can it help bridge that gap? Um, video calls, it's far easier to demonstrate empathy, as we know, and people look for clues of, of an empathy and engagement from 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 uh, from consultants. Um, and we know that empathy delivers higher patient satisfaction, better adherence, reduced anxiety, better enablement, and better overall uh, all outcomes. I think in the out of hours, um, I would say that um, I, I find it really, really, really helpful. Um, and I will quite often um, be triaging um, and managing something by telephone and I'll jump straight into a near me um, for, for more information. Uh, last night I was working and I did that for three or four things. Um, I did it for a cellulitis. I did it for an eye infection um, and I did it for, what was the other one? Oh, it was another cellulitis, in fact. But um, it's really good for children. Um, and, and you say, well, oh, children, I like to see them in person because um, I, I want to be sure that they're OK. But um, there's a huge amount you can tell when you see people in person um, on, on, on the videos um, that really, really helps um, you um, better understand how soon you need to bring them down. So you might still bring them down, but it might mean that you do it sooner. Um, near me is not um, for everybody and it is not the be all and end all. It is a choice um, and it's a tool within the kit to have available to you. Um, I would strongly encourage um, out of our areas, they need to have the kit embedded at all the consulting points and um, the integrated screens can really help with that. Um, and I, I think it's a really useful investment to help broaden how we engage with our, our prof to prof lines, how we engage with other service users and how we reach out to people to get something a bit more that we can't get over the telephone. Mark, my sincere apologies for the uh, IT glitches there. I, uh, I think I had a browser too many opened and uh, um, I'm sorry for taking up a little bit of extra time. Um, and my own anxiety, um, you, maybe you could have, there we go, I have a nice demonstration of demonstrating my own anxiety because you could see my face as I was speaking, <laughs> which is why uh, video is definitely uh, better in some ways when it works. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Scott. And uh, yeah, well recovered. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we that's fine. I think everything's getting good audio now. So I appreciate your persistence with that. And, and again, yeah, yeah, you got too many things all on the go at one time, Scott. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll just move along now to um, Martin Berry from Urgent Care Services in NHS Five. Um, and we'll just wait for uh, Martin to be brought up on the screen. Uh, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, that's great, Mark. Thanks very much for inviting us uh, to show our uh, demonstration on how we've managed to incorporate near me into our services within NHS Fife. Um, so I would just like to begin just to show really how we've managed to embed that into our service. Um, Uh, Mark, if we could, uh, uh, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, near me, one of our challenge, our big, biggest challenges trying to get near me into our service was uh, being enrolled at the exact same time as our telephone triage hubs and our COVID-19 uh, assessment centres, which were put in place uh, contingency measures from the Scottish Government. Um, that same challenge, uh, was the difficulty of trying to run an, an urgent care centre as well. Um, so we had three different systems that we were trying to keep focus as well as employing the near me system as well. Um, if we go to the next slide, I'll just quickly summarise some of these, those challenges. So um, biggest ones, probably the clinicians uh, uh, uptake of it, uh, that kind of disbelief of how the, the service would be used, um, how confident they were on using it, uh, the struggle of getting used to that new service, um, uh, some clinicians uh, not being able to uh, use the new system, that bit of uh, IT uh, hesitancy, um, it changing to something new, whilst also having your COVID assessment centre and, and triaging in the background. Um, I would say historically, from a nurse practitioner point of view, um, we would tend to always see face to face patients and the GPs tended to pick up the clinical advices. Um, that historically has now changed um, as we now take on uh, that is a dual role where the AMPs and nurse practitioners are equally phoning uh, patients as well to do those clinical advices. Um, uh, so I think that that was one of the challenges was trying to get the uptake for our nurse practitioners as well as the GPs to try and uh, and and take on this new system. Uh, a lot uh, initial feedback in the beginning with the patients that kind of fear of their surroundings being seen and not to be uh, not keen to be seen on camera. Um, had that same situation with uh, with clinicians as well. Um, so it was just trying to get that those staff to become more confident uh, in using the system. Um, so I could just go to it. So yeah, the challenges that we then tried to address and how we tried to address them, that would be the, uh, we had IT support from NHS Fife. Um, we then also had educational sessions, training sessions um, that were done in our COVID assessment center um, with our t uh, telephone triage team uh, with Lynette Marshall, who is our lead nurse. She took the head the line of that to encourage the that dissemination of that learning and she was overseeing and supporting um, from a clinical leads point of view on encouraging the staff to use it. And it was a team of um, rotating 12 co uh, computer systems in our telephone triage centre, which were all fitted with near me and cameras and headsets in the very beginning of the contingency. And now those have been disseminated across every single base in Fife. Every single computer is now fitted with webcam technology and uh, everybody has their own individual head headsets have been issued to all staff. Um, everybody has now had access to the TURAS learning system, or the e-learning system. And uh, now we are trying to make sure that all staff just get that reassurance uh, and we share the experiences with each other to, to show how good the system works. Um, if we just jump to the next slide there, Mark, thanks. 
so now what we've learned from it is the patients are actually quite happy with using this system. Um, some good news stories. Uh, I was catching up with the team yesterday and we've been talking about how a uh, comfort of their own home. Uh, they don't have to come out of the house at three o'clock in the morning. It could be uh, raining, it could be snow, it could be hailstones. It could even be sunny in Scotland, which is extraordinarily unusual. Um, so, do you know, we you get these patients are much more comfortable in their own environment. You you see that you can still see them face to face in in that and via the webcam. Um, they're more comfortable to tell you how they're feeling. Uh, you can uh, they're not as anxious as coming into the the, the doctor centre, the the GP centre. Um, staff feel that they're getting more reassurance from the patient that they they can see them in their own environment and how they are comfortable. Um, and we've also established two near me champions, two nurse practitioners are going to take on the role of um, making sure staff are up to date with their, their e-learning on Turas and how they can encourage and put more improvements and focus into staff using the near me system. Um, so just on to the next slide, please. Much. So, uh, so in success, I would say uh, we, the, the, a lot of clinicians are quite happy with the system. Uh, I think we have 59 clinicians that are, uh, have access to the near me so far. Um, we're aiming to have every single member of the staff using the, the all clinical staff using the near me system. Good Friday, um, we had quite a lot of calls come through NHS Fife, um, 657 with 224 of them being clinical advices on that 24 hour period. Now, eight of those were near me consultations of which I did a few myself. Um, ideally, I would have preferred a lot more than that being done. But uh, when I totaled up how much we've actually done over the year, it was 775 near me consultations have been carried out in NHS Fife. So uh, I think it's quite good to show that we are doing a fair amount per day for the amount of patients that we averagely go through in a clinical consultation and how much time that that saved. On an average, we would probably have a consultation face to face 10 to 20 minutes long and these consultations were averaging about six to seven minutes. So that face to face time has been reduced. Patients don't have to leave their house. They're comfortable, they're reassured, they get to ask the questions and they get to get the answers. Um, for a range of conditions such as uh, bites and cellulitis and some cysts and rashes. Uh, you can clearly see if the patient systemically well. We were having a conversation that even some patients that may have chronic conditions such as COPD, a lot of them have um, their own set of vital signs equipment at home. Most of them have a thermometer or a blood pressure kit, a stats monitor, pulse oximeter. You can sometimes get a full set of vital signs off your patient without them having to leave the house um, and using the patient to look, listen and feel their, their self and you get a good examination on that video link with, with the patient. Um, and a lot of them may, during the pandemic, have felt that they've maybe not been able to see their own practitioner and they felt a wee bit slightly isolated or you might say they say that they haven't actually had anybody see them and they, but now they feel that they have been, they've, they've managed to have somebody uh, visualise what their ailment is and have that reassurance um, which was brought to them by the Near Me system. Um, so that's, that's us, I wish I had a wee bit more uh, good success stories to share. Um, just trying to keep it within the 10 minute mark. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Now that was really good. That's a really good snapshot of, of your experience and how you found that and particularly, you know, a very honest account of some of the challenges you faced and also how you were able to tackle that. So that was really super to hear. Um, and again, um, you know, good, uh, the 775, you know, uh, consultations, but the, the time that saved you and the quality of the outcomes for those patients was a real, really good to see. So that's excellent data to share. So what I'm going to do now is just bear with me. I'm going to queue up uh, Di Anderson now, who's the out of our service manager in Dumfries and Galloway. And uh, over to you, Di. Thank you very much. We're just going to talk about um, some of our challenges and how we've um, overcome them. Um, I shared a lot of Martin's challenges as well. I think it was the engagement or, or the lack of 
engagement with staff, trying to, to get them on board um, at a challenging time when uh, we were faced with COVID. Um, we were having to make a lot of changes within the department, um, as well as put in place um, a new tool to um, a, a triage our patients and have consultations with them in a safe way. Um, so what we um, had done initially was we set up some iPads, um, so we, we had a quick fix because obviously it took time to get the technology in place. Um, and we largely um, are dependent on sessional GPs um, in the out of hours department or, or where up until recently, um, and some of them didn't have NHS um, email addresses. Um, so we, we created like a generic password so that everybody could get a login and if we we're using the iPad that overcame it. And then obviously as the, the weeks progressed, we, we got the equipment through support from our IT um, and we were able to install within both the COVID hub and the out of hour setting um, the, the webcams and, and the functionality, the headsets and that so the near me consultations could take place. Um, I also think in Dumfries and Galloway, um, one of our challenges, we've got quite a, a vast um, elderly population and obviously technology and the barrier that we're, we're faced with there is something that we just have to manage. Um, in relation to um, our champions, we, we have recently now started in our um, out of hours department to recruit a number of contracted GPs and Dr Bermani, who is going to, to share some of her good news stories with us after myself, um, is seen as our champion for the, the service, um, along with some of our new recruited GPs to try and embed and encourage um, all staff to use that. But regardless now of how they come into the service, we make that as a mandatory, that they're signed up and the NHS near, near me as a tool, a function that would be considered uh, where appropriate when they're doing consultations. So how did we um, overcome some of the challenges? Um, we had um, pulled together um, a user's guide um, for clinicians and out of hours, which I'm going to try and share my screen. I'm not sure if it will share, Mark, with the slide up on the screen just now. It should um, appear. Give it a minute though, it should be all right. Okay. Bear with me. OK, Mark's just going to queue it up. So can everybody see that? Sorry, can somebody speak? Is that visible? Yes, it is yes. yes. All right, thank you. Um, so it's it's only a word document, but we thought that within in Dumfries and Galloway, this would help inform the process of we would manage an NHS near, near me call along with um, some presentations um, um, that would come into the service and what would be suitable for those. So basically, um, as the cases come down, our, our call handlers, their process, they were made up like slides and how they would use the function within the NHS near me. Um, we used to use a mobile device um, in the office um, and send the link to their either mobile or an email address. But um, since the functionality came on for the text fun functionality, that's been um, really well received. And not only do the call handlers use that to make appointments and put them into a virtual waiting room, some of the GPs actually find that really useful when they're, they're undertaking telephone assessments and say, you know, I'm going to call you in now onto the, the near me. So that, that's been really well received. So the script, and I can share this after the meeting, um, just about the process. Um, we ask all patients just to join a couple of minutes before their um, consultation. Uh, so the virtual waiting room and here's a list of the sort of clinical criteria for patient video consultations that we pulled together. So there was ones for non-COVID related conditions, um, things like dermatology, chronic disease, for example, as I think it was Scott said COPD, the prof to prof calls, um, 
medication related consultations um, and so forth. Um, and as I say, Esmat can share some of the, the conditions that she's um, can relate to that's been some really good news stories. And then there was those that we pulled a guide also to say that um, those that we don't think BC would generally be used for. Um, and again, we, we've listed them abdominal pain, breathlessness. Um, and it was just to try and make it really fluid and what our expectation was of them and that it wasn't something that had to be used for everything. It's just a, another tool that was useful. And then there was the, around the COVID related calls um, where again, it could also be used when you have patients who are anxious. Um, a BC may provide that reassurance and we actually found when we run a successful COVID hub that that worked really well. Um, and as Scott had said, you know, it just gives that person that reassurance when you see that other face rather over the telephone. So that was us in Dumfries and Galloway. Um, it's, I'll just unshare my screen now. Um, but on a whole, but we, we probably need to do a bit more. Um, and I think that's where um, we're looking just for a little bit of support and how we can actually do that. I haven't got any stats on our calls. Um, I would say that it's if it's not used widely, it's a forgotten tool. Um, but when the likes of um, we've got Dr. Bumani and some of the contracted GPs, um, they're very fluid in its use and we see a high percentage of our calls come in then. So that's everything from me. Hopefully my screen's down. Thank you, Di. That, that was really good to hear. Uh, and again, looking at how you engage staff earlier on and, and get the IT and, and the login set up properly. That's, that's, that's really essential. It's really good to see the clear processes you had for the call handlers and, and the clinical kind of breakdown of what's appropriate for NIMI or not. Just, I just noticed that you had a, a, a section there for people who were deaf or hard of hearing. And what we've just re discovered recently in the last couple of weeks is that, that within Google Chrome browsers now, there is a function where it can convert speech to text. So if you're in a NIMI call and you're on a Chrome browser, you can ask the browser to um, turn the, the speech into text. So that might make it more accessible for some of the people who are hard of hearing. Um, I'm going to just work on resharing my screen again. And hopefully I should be able to pull up. So that's great. So uh, what I'd like to do, uh, Di mentioned earlier uh, that uh, Dr. Esmat Bermani is going to be speaking to us about some of the, her success stories are in her out of hours experiences. So um, I'll, I'll hand over to Esmat now. Thank you very much, Di. Hello. Can you all hear me? Yep. OK, so um, video consultations, what it, it has several names. We call it NHS near me. As a starting point, I'm a huge fan of video consultations. Because uh, it's part of telemedicine and telemedicine is not a new concept. It was used during the war times also with less technology. So I've done a number of video consultations on NHS near me. A lot of pediatric colleagues as uh, I mean pediatric uh, cases as other colleagues have said, it's actually very enjoyable to see children on video consultation because the first thing they do is, oh mom, that is the doctor. And it's a very charming environment. A lot of skin conditions. So now I have started uh, focusing more on non dermatology cases. So I'll present two latest ones which I did over the bank holiday and the weekend gone. And if there is time, I would have liked to speak about one specific uh, adult skin condition. So over the weekend at night, two o'clock, there was a phone call for uh, left shoulder pain. Looking at the notes uh, from 111, seen the GP but uh, was told to take uh, painkillers. A 
very young patient in his 40s. So I called him first and told him I'm going to send you a text for the video link because what I do is when I log on to Adastra, I also log on to the NHS near me. So he was obviously very happy that it's two o'clock at night and uh, he doesn't have to come out. So the first thing he said is he has this left shoulder pain for four months and nobody has examined him. So I said, OK, we are going to examine on the video link and you are going to examine yourself. So no injuries, nothing. Shoulder pain of four months. GP did a telephone consultation and said uh, go and get uh, over the counter analgesics. So he got ibuprofen and the eight by 500 cocodamol. So obviously that is not going to help with the frozen shoulder pain. No injuries. So it's, uh, it's so easy. I asked the patient to move his arm the way we, we would do in a face to face consultation. Yeah, after asking all the questions about injuries and all. Move your arm outwards. You can easily clearly see the limited range of movement. Move your hand to the to your back. What are we checking there? We are checking abduction and external rotation. Move your arm over your head and put it on your ear. Obviously he can't. So then by range of movement examination, I'm left with how to check passive movements. So I told him, take your good arm, hold your painful arm and move it outwards. That's already a passive movement examination, isn't it? So it's obviously a frozen shoulder in the freezing stage, four months down the line and the range of movements are limited globally. And uh, eight by 500 cocodamol is not going to help that poor man. So we agreed on stronger painkillers. But it was cold, it's late at night and he said he's not coming out now to take stronger painkillers. He will come in the morning and the GP to refer to physio, which is going to take a long time. So at least meanwhile, he has strong analgesics to to help him. And a reassurance that this is not anything bad the disease progress of such shoulder pains can take up to three months, can take up to six months and be aware that in certain cases it ends up in a surgical intervention, so be prepared for it. And it was all so easy because when I did the video link, I could see that he was on his bed with all the duet and all and suddenly at two o'clock he realized that OK, he can't carry on anymore. So instead of getting him out to come to the base, which is about 20 minutes drive, it was very well done on a video consultation. Second case, again of uh, doctors tend to get very sensitive about uh, chest uh, COPD. So I had this video link on some Saturday, I think. 89 year old gentleman multiple comorbidities, heart failure, COPD. 111 call say the wife thinks he is uh, talking rubbish. OK, but what helped was there was a very skilled daughter. The daughter had taken temperature, pulse rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, except she didn't have the oxygen probe. So I spoke to the daughter and we agreed for a video link and I told the daughter that get him on a chair and you will have to flip your camera on his face so that I can see his breathing and see sort of, you know, an eyeball triage, orbital triage. So the daughter did that on a very good mobile phone and very good camera. It was so clear. He was sitting, so what could I examine on the video link? Is he breathless to look at? No. Put the camera on his feet. 
Does he have swelling of the ankles? No. Observations she had told me. Can you initiate any little conversation so that I hear his voice? So she did that. The only thing parameter to deal with was he had a fever. And I asked about urine. I asked the wife, uh, he has COPD. Is his flame a different color? Does it look muckier than his normal flame? The answer was yes. So my, my point here is we know COPD will always be visible. Do I really need to put my stethoscope on the chest to see that somebody is wheezing? It's clear that he is wheezing, he has fever, he is not breathless to look at, he is talking well, he is not struggling in between the sentences. So it comes to exacerbation of COPD and antibiotics. He had all his inhalers, so the daughter came for some coamoxiclav and it was like didn't need a patient of 89 years old with COPD to be brought up. And uh, the wife was happy, the patient was happy, the, wife, the daughter was happy and everything ended well. So a quick third uh, presentation I had was very strange. So I had this gentleman who works uh, at a car dealer um, company, he's the base uh, manager. So his GP is in Glasgow, he works in Carlisle and he lives in Anna. So you can imagine the triangle and I am in Dumfries. 12 days of skin rush, the spread was uh, exactly the area of tying the trouser belt in between thighs, uh, under the arms, sort of the, the fatty uh, joints uh, where you would expect intertrigo. Yeah, and the belt area was obviously a contact dermatitis. So he went to Boots and was given some kind of emollient. He was young, he was happy to take his belt off and show me he was alone in the office. So it was about eight o'clock in the evening. And it was very clear, the video was clear that the rash on the uh, joint area was intertrigo and the belt area was contact dermatitis. So because the patients don't know how services run, and then he tells me, oh, actually, doctor, I have a private cover. OK, so why were you waiting for 12 days if you have a private cover? Oh, can you write me a referral to a private dermatologist? No, it has to come from your own GP. The way I'm talking to you on a video, arrange a similar video with your GP and ask the GP to give you a referral. So this video consultation saved the men coming all the way from Carlisle, which is about how many miles, like 35 miles? Yeah, so it's about 35 miles, about 50 hours drive. So my take on this is a lot can be done on video consultations. There are challenges of poor reception, poor signal. Uh, I don't have data on my phone, but those will be about 20% of cases. If you go by the rule of 80 by 20, those will be about 20% of the cases. Okay, any question? Thank, thank you, Esma. That was, that was a really good real life account of, uh, of your experiences and, and what we'll do. There are a few questions coming through on the Q&A, so we'll, we'll move on to that shortly. But again, I think just to reiterate what you said and what Martin said about using the patient and the patient's family as your hands and your eyes and yeah. your ears, you know, that, that's, that's a really key concept, I think, to get across. That's, that's been really um, well communicated, I think, from, from everybody is, is, is the if someone's got somebody else there, use them. But if they've just got themselves, 
there's there's lots you can do so that's really super to hear so what i would like to do just quickly is just to draw people's attention to the resources we have the the guidance that um scott mentioned earlier for general practice and for out of hours so that's available here and we'll, we'll circulate that with the resources afterwards and what i'd like to do now is just touch base with rachel who's been um, uh, staffing the, the Q&A and, and uh, what have you got for us, Rachel? And, I, and I've got your message about your, your internet, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how we get on, but we can step in if needed. Amazing, thank you, Mark. Um, I've got a few questions in the chat. So the first one is, have you noticed a change in call outcomes uh, since use of NUMI has increased and confidence has increased within your staff? Um, Martin, I might throw to you first, if that's okay. Hi, sorry, I just couldn't quite hear you, Rachel. Could you just repeat that? Yeah, I also didn't understand the question. Okay, might be my internet. I'll go again. Yeah, I, I, I heard you, just, Rachel. So yeah. just, just turn just, your camera off, Rachel. We'll see how we get on with that. If you turn your camera off, we'll try that. Have you noticed a change in call outcomes as your confidence in near me has increased and you've used it more within your service? Uh, yes, I totally would agree with that. What uh, what we've found is that patients are much more happier that the fact that they've not had to leave their own environment uh, on any of the feedbacks, because uh, generally the way we teach, uh, well, I suppose from a nurse practitioner point of view, is the, the closing of your consultation and just uh, that kind of um, quick check with the patient that they're happy and understanding the plan and understood that the the instructions uh, of of guidance that they've been given in that worsening statement and generally they've been quite happy with that um, what i would say is that it, the the volume that's happened since the pandemic is that mo more calls that we take now are from a clinical advice point of view rather than a face-to-face -face exam to reduce the capacity on a center um, patients seem to be quite content with having a telephone advice call. Uh, I would say that most of the patients that I have spoken to who have had a near me consultation haven't required to call back. Um, I, so I would say that the benefit of this system couldn't be understated. Um, and just to just reiterate what Mark had summarised there from ESMA as well, um, is that using your resources that you have, um, that video chat with your patient, you can see them live and you can get them to do an, their own examination on themselves. Um, is that OK? Amazing. Thank you, Martin. That's fabulous. How about in Dumfries? Di, what have your experience? Um, Probably is, Matt, would be better placed because something for me um, to, to, to progress with this work is that after consultations have taken place with NHS near me, I'd like to send a, a link to the patients and ask them to, to complete a questionnaire and get their feedback so we can get some good, re meaningful um, data back to, to understand if it is working well for them. But I know through discussions with um, ESMA, she has shared that it has uh, been well received, but maybe she wants to come in. So what I do is uh, uh, to, uh, when the consultation ends, I ask the patients, so how was it? Did you like it? And nobody has said, no, I still want to be seen. Mothers with children, they are even happier because you can imagine a mother getting the baby dressed, put in the car seat in this cold, and if I could see them on the video, at the most, it will be a skin rash. And with the modern iPhones and Samsungs, the camera is pretty good. And uh, I asked the children who are, you know, the toddlers and three-year-olds who are able to, to talk, do you want to say bye to the doctor? And they say bye. And the mothers are really, you know, something that is only a viral rash the mother is coping with carpal and neurofen. Why do I have to bring the child to out of hours bed in the middle of the night? So generally nobody so far has told me, no doctor, I still want to be seen. Excellent. 
apologize, but that is fabulous feedback from the patient. So it's great that you're collecting that. No, uh, I, asked, Scott, I, I asked every end of the consultation. So how was that? And nobody has shown me any, you know, not happy expression on the face. Amazing. Scott, did you want to jump in on that from your perspective within Tayside? Um, yeah, yeah, I guess it was just to, 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 to highlight. I think what the question is, is a little bit of the suggestion of the question is, you know, the change in outcomes as in, you know, can you complete more calls and things like that this way? And absolutely, you can complete far more calls this way than you can when you bring them down. There's a lot of um, things put on about, you know, the time that it takes to do it and, and you know, moving from a triage onto a near me. Um, in total, you, you're talking about a 10 minutes um, kind of consultation. But if you talk about, if you think about it from a, 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 an organisational perspective, what is the time instead um, you know, some GP might say, oh, you, you think you've got a gunky foot and an infected toenail. Oh, if you just come down, that'll only take a few minutes to see. But the opportunity cost in that to get them down is the time for somebody to appoint them, the time for them to phone when they arrive, the time for people to put PPP, PPE on, the time for the room to be clean before and after, and the time to see them. Um, instead, I, I just give them the link directly to near me and just just jump straight into near me, open up and look at it and say, uh, that's excellent. I either, you know, if it's during the daytime uh, on a Saturday or whatever, I'll say, I'll email uh, a prescription down to whatever your local chemist is, or I'll say, you know, come come to King's Cross and I'll leave it at the front desk. Um, and, and the opportunity cost for the entire system is far, far, far less. So I think if you're using it appropriately, it will save you time throughout your system. If you're, if you're using it for everything, I don't know that that will be the case. It might well cost you more time because um, telephone in general, as I highlighted at the start, is generally shorter. But for the things that you need it to do, um, I noticed on the Dufres and Galley one, um, uh, just a, a, a comment about we didn't use it for kids. Uh, we, I do use it for kids. I think it's phenomenally good for kids. But again, it lets you bring them down at an appropriate time scale. So you might look at the kid on a near me and actually think, actually, you should come down now. Um, I, I don't want to see you in four hours. I want to see you, you know, I don't even want to wait for you to be appointed. Just go in the car and come straight down just now and we'll see you as soon as you get here. So even if you think the need's seen, there are still things that you can gain from a near me that you just don't gain from a telephone call. So kids are really, really good because they're very visual. You can see in a child, I struggle to think of a child that I've admitted to hospital that when I looked at them, I wasn't able to tell they were quite sick. Um, it's that they're phenomenally visual. So um, kids are really, really good for it and it will more accurately help you triage them as well. Um, so I think that the, the time question is quite important to understand in your systems as you're setting it up within, within the out of hours. I will add a few more points to Scott. I had a case where I did a video with uh, for a child. So the child was clearly unwell on an orbital triage. So I finished it quickly and told the mother to come straight away now. And that also gave me an opportunity to prepare the pediatric registrar that I'm expecting an unwell child who will need admission. So while the mother was coming, I had already preemptively informed pediatric registrar because to send children to pediatrics is again, wait until there is room so that there is no crowding and all those COVID things, you know. So it gives me the opportunity of preparing the pediatric registrar for an admission. Thank you, Esma, and that point also um, has been reflected in urgent care within the work um, within flow navigation centres as well as ED, just having that opportunity to prepare for ongoing um, yeah. uh, treatment and presentation. So thank you. Um, on, we've got another question around, have you experienced switching from phone consultation to near me consultation? And how have you found that experience? Uh, Martin. Uh, I would say we've actually found that a uh, quite quite easy, um, mainly because we moved quite quickly to an all clinical advice triage system from the contingency measures from the national government. Um, 
So that was lined up by our lead nurse, Lynette Marshall, who had encouraged the Near Me system with all of our telephone triage um, personnel that we had. So those 12 PCs that were set up initially within our, um, our hub centre, all the clinicians were encouraged to use that Near Me system. But it's like Scott says, you could dive straight in straight with a Near Me consultation call or um, you could quickly phone the patient and just have them still on the phone whilst they accept the near me consultation and then have the webcam up, just hang up the phone and then just continue. And it's maybe only a minute you've wasted just getting that all set up. Um, but it's very, you're not changing anything. You're just adding that visual perception, which then the patient can have a good conversation with you, that face to face visual face-to-face -face examination with them and uh, they've, they're more at ease because they feel like who they, they feel like who they're actually speaking to um, and they can put a face to a name and get that same reassurance that they would have got had they just came down. Amazing, thank you Martin and it's great um, for those who aren't as familiar with Near Me, I think it was in August last year, um, a function was in um, put into the system which enables you to either text or email the waiting area link to a patient so they can easily join uh, the waiting area and that was really helpful when you are switching from phone uh, to near me. So great that you're having that experience Martin. Yeah, uh, what about, I, oh, sorry. Just, sorry Rachel just to add to that because that, that, that was one thing that we probably had difficulty in the beginning was um, when you had clinicians who weren't used to that kind of system or that IT hesitancy again, um, we had dispatch send out all the links to all the patients in the, in the beginning, but now most of the clinicians who use the Near Me system will just send that text link straight to the patient live from the own system. So that then speeds up your consultation with your patient and there's no delay in that conversation. Amazing, excellent. Uh, Scott, did you have anything to add from your experiences with switching from phone to NIMI? Uh, yeah, I, I popped it in the chat. Um, I don't know, sorry, whether, whether forgive me, Rachel, whether that's the, the, the presenter chat or whether it's the main chat. Um, but if it's not, if it's just in the presenter chat, maybe you could copy and paste it across to the so everyone can see it. Um, but um, I have a, just a script that I say, and, and I've said it so many times that I, it just naturally flows. Um, uh, and, and, and I'll read it out for those that if it's not going through, you know, are you using an iPhone? If not, is it a mobile with Google Chrome? I'd like to see if we can review this on a video call. And at that point, I've already got it set up and I'm texting them. I've copied the number from Adastra and I'm pasting it into to near me and I'm about to hit send. And as soon as they say yes, I hit send and I just say, I've just sent you a link uh, by text. Please make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi and click on the top link fill in the details and hit start call. It's OK if you don't connect, I will phone you back. Um, and, um, and and the patients are like, oh, all right. Oh, I've got the text. And I say, well, and I, and I hang up the phone at that point because I do say to them, obviously, because if you're trying to use the same phone that you're having a phone call on and you're doing a Wi-Fi uh, and you're doing a video call on, the, the phone might panic that you're trying to use the microphone twice and stuff like that. So um, I do, 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 I do come off the phone call, but I do reassure them that I phone them back and, and within 10 or 15 seconds are sitting in the waiting room. So um, it is pretty seamless. Um, and I think the more you do it, the, the more seamless it becomes. I imagine also when you get started, it's a little clunkier. But yeah, you're right, Rachel, the, or I think it was Mark, sorry, you said that that phenomenal um, um, accessibility of the mobile phone uh, text link, it goes through in about 15 seconds and copying and pasting it from the Adastra record straight into the, uh, straight into the text uh, line. And the other thing you might want to spot um, is uh, make sure that you log in before you start um, your consulting and tick leave yourself logged in. And the other really helpful bit is um, I spoke to somebody on the phone the other day and I thought it sounded like juvenile spring eruption. And I said to mum, I think I know what this is, but I just want to quickly glance at it on a video call if that's OK. But on the text, when you send the text at the bottom, there's a, a, a free text box where you can, um, uh, for example, I think that you were mentioning you want to do a survey. Well, actually, no. Um, when you send them the text link, put the survey link in there into a survey monkey or something if you want to. So you could put it in there. Um, but what I did was I typed juvenile spring eruption because I said, mum, as soon as I get off the call, you might not remember what it is I think this is. So I made a guess at the diagnosis and put it in. I wasn't trying to be happy or anything it was literally because I knew it's not 
it's not a natural kind of uh, diagnosis that you can always remember the wording of when you finish the call. So I put it in the text so that she can look it up later when she forgets what I what I said to her um, and she can go and look it online online. So that little free text button is really, really helpful as well. That's a new addition in the most recent upgrade, Mark, I think. Yeah, I, I thought there was a functionality within to, to send the link. So, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that a bit more. Excellent. Thank you, Scott. And that script is amazing. We've dropped that in the chat. So thanks for sharing that resource. Um, I've got a question from the chat around um, what, do you have any processes for getting photo, for a photo record of an injury using near me? And they ask about screen sharing or if you've got any other processes for getting a record. Um, Diane, Esma, I'll start with you. Um, you don't record, isn't it, Guy? Sorry, is Matt? We are not recording the video. No, the video is not this. No, I mean the NHS near me. No, we, we don't record them. No. What was the question again, Rachel? Um, it's just about um, one of the participants wanted to know if if you need a photo record of an injury or a wound, how do you go about that? What is your process of getting that? Because obviously you've got near me, you can see it live, but if you want to record that in the patient file, um, an image, do you have any processes for we, doing that? Okay, I go we don't have, go on Dave. Sorry, we don't have the, sorry as Matt, we don't have the functionality within Adastra as yet to store um, a photograph, but we are very careful. We could ask them to send it through to our generic email box so the GP can view it in the first instance before making a, an NHS near me. Um, but we don't have a, a facility to store that that we're aware of within Adastra. I think it's something that they're actually working on um, so that that can be attached as a record, but not at the moment. Excellent. Thank you, Di. Scott, how have you um, done that in your practice? Yeah, I think most out of our areas have now looked at generic clinical inboxes um, and make sure that guys, when you do set up those generic clinical inboxes, make sure you have an auto reply on it that tells the patient how that information will be stored and used. Um, you know, keep yourself GDPR um, um, compliant and um, it's really helpful to put that as an auto reply on um, that maybe says something like, you know, um, many thanks. Uh, if you have submitted, if you are a patient and have submitted a photo, this will be reviewed by the GP that sent it to you. It may be sent on to secondary care where relevant um, and otherwise, if no longer required, would be deleted um, after uh, uh, at the end of the shift or something. So make sure you put something on there auto reply to, to help uh, keep yourself covered. Um, it does say when you connect to the uh, consultant connect as a patient that the, the deliberately says um, uh, your your consultation will not be recorded or or, or pictures taken of the consultation. Um, I have done it um, and I said to the patient, um, it was a guy who, uh, a bricky manual worker or something, he'd skinned his, his, his back of his hand really deeply um, two weeks before on a slab and he said that it's really painful and he couldn't move his finger anymore and I started the, the near me, just jumped straight into it, um, the easiest thing to do and this poor bricky, um, his, 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 his IPJ was massively swollen um, and uh, he couldn't move it, it was fixed. Um, and I, I was very suspicious that he had an intraarticular uh, infection. It was it was nasty looking, very swollen. Um, and I said, listen, can I take a screenshot of that and send it to plastics? Because I think you need to come in tomorrow and get this washed out. Um, and the guy was absolutely over the moon. He was very rural. And he said, no, 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 absolutely. And I said, listen, just hold it still. And we did it in a couple of different angles. Um, we did, I just did print screen and I pasted it into paint. If you don't know how to do that, look it up on, on YouTube or something. Um, saved it as a JPEG picture and I emailed it to us up the plastics uh, on call um, and I just attached it as, a, as an attachment to an email to them. I said, do you want to have a look at it and I can send you a picture? Um, he looked at it, passed it on to his consultant. He was listed the next morning for his for his washout. They completely agreed. Um, and so um, the patient needs to completely consent to this. So you can do this stuff, but the patient needs to know how you're using the photos, what you're using them for, how will they be stored and how will they be deleted? Um, so make sure you really are clear with that with them. And I wrote it in the notes, of course, what I was what I was doing. So you can do it, but it does say specifically when they join that that it wouldn't be recorded or screen captures done. Um, but, uh, you know, in this case, it was very rural and it was facilitating an urgent operation the next day. Um, the patient, um, of course, uh, was happy to consent to that. But I, I wouldn't do it as routine. Um, generally, pictures are, are far better. I have to say for the rashes you have to see in out of hours, 
Generally, a phone connected to Wi-Fi, as, 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 as pointed out, is absolutely sufficient to see, um, you know, shingles and cellulitis and um, even preceptal orbital cellulitis and things. It's very clear what's going on um, usually. And um, we're not talking about the difference between, you know, Grover's and neutrophilic dermatoses here. This is not, you know, the nuances of, <laughs> of fine dermatology. So um, absolutely, uh, it can be really yeah, well used there. Amazing, thank you. I'll hand back over to you now, Mark, for the yep. close. Thank you very much, Rachel. Now, that's been really, really healthy discussion and an and, and and opportunity to explore some of the kind of practical nitty gritty bits and pieces that go on in trying to deliver out of our services for folks. So I, I really appreciate the, the, the time you spent uh, preparing for our sessions today and, and, and delivering what you've delivered. And uh, thank you for everybody that's, that's come to join us today. Um, I'm going to just um, put it in the uh, chat. Uh, oh, I'm going to put in a wee um, link to a form that would would very much like you to fill in, please. It is just a short survey of four questions, and this will just give us a flavour as to who's been out there today, and also um, your opinions on the session and what might be helpful in the future if you're working out of hours, and what other things might be helpful for us as a near me network to support you in your out of hours work. The session today will be recorded. So if you've got relatives, not relatives, friends, if you've got colleagues that you would like to share it with who could make it today, please share it with them. Um, if there's questions that have gone unanswered in the Q&A, we'll do our best to try and pitch those to the, the panel if we haven't covered them uh, in the actual live session because it's, it's time for us to finish now. So um, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, if you want any more information on near me, the links were are here on this current slide. Um, and um, we look forward to seeing you again at one of our future webinars. And uh, that is it for now. Thank you very much, everybody.